Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 35 of Direwolf20's server play series. Hanging out with Pahimar, Mdio, Sotmead's on, but he's been quiet so I don't know if he's AFK or not. And Soren's here, but uh, also being quiet because he's uh, not got a microphone where he's at at the moment, just like last episode. So, been a quiet couple days. Yep, Soren's out of town. Uh, we uh, Basically, I think a lot of the modders are working on 1.5, isn't that right, Pahimar? That would be correct. Yeah, lots and lots of work needs to go into 1.5. It's another one of those Minecraft changed everything updates, so it's going to be a huge uh, amount of work for these guys to get everything updated. But I think there's a lot of progress being made uh, to make it better in the future. So I, I get the feeling like, uh, you know, Forge and... and um, and uh, FML are being kept up to date pretty cleanly. So, like, for the most part, they're kind of ready already. And now the uh, mod developers just have to, you know, got a bit of work to do to get their mods up and running. So 1.5 isn't out yet at the time of this recording. But, uh, you know, uh, it, it could be coming any time now. So I think they're just kind of doing their best to be ahead of it. So that hopefully most of the mods will be updated relatively shortly after the update. Does that sound about right, Pa? I would say that sounds accurate. Yay, I know what I'm talking about. That's unusual. Meanwhile, I'm getting some stuff. What am I doing over here? How am I? Stuff getting is good. Yes, I'm making an uh, HV solar array. Because we are actually doing a little bit of, uh, uh, we're, we're draining a bit of power by way of the workshop. I'm not saying it's not able to keep up, but it's having a little trouble keeping up. And Thorn, of course, is playing with one of his new blocks. Hooray! Liquid Void Block, that's right. You guys should have seen the Liquid Void Block in my Zycraft Spotlight, which is now public. Uh, at least by the time this video airs, it should be public. Just finished recording it. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Uh, actually, I am probably out of town at the time that this video airs, um, or maybe just getting back. I uh, had to go out of town for a week, which is why I had such a backlog of videos. Um, pretty much, you know, wanted to make sure that I had a video to release every day. So while I was out of town for a week, I made try a good backlog. Now, today's episode will involve all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, I want to work on a little bit more power for the workshop. Like I said, uh, we're a little bit low. So, I want to get myself a bunch of electric engines. The electric engines, uh, these guys right here, I'm going to need about 10 of them because by my calculations, if I make these electric engines as efficiently as possible, uh, 10 of them will be what I need to do to get what I want. Hey, there's an advanced electric jetpack now. I guess that's a new version of, uh, that's neat. Cool. I think that's new in, uh, in whatchamacallit, yeah, the gravity suit mod. Oh my, electric boosters, advanced lap pack, that looks dangerous. <laughs> I guess that's mid-tier between uh, the gravity engine and, and whatnot. That's before the gravity suit. Cool. Anyway, what was I saying? Right, uh, I should be able to get about, I want to say it's 14 Minecraft jewels per tick out of an engine, which is more uh, than we get from our industrial engines. So these guys out here... Okay, they actually only are producing eight Minecraft jewels per tick, right? So I should be able to get almost twice as much uh, with an electric engine if I properly configure it. Now, that is, of course, going to require a lot of, um, you know, uh, crazy amounts of uh, EU. I think I want to say it's about 500 that I'll need to get that much. It's about, it's about 50 uh, EU to run one of these engines. So I'm going to put down my HV solar, just like that and make my way down here. And what I'm going to basically lay out is 10 or so of these electronic engines. So we're going to need them all about here. So that's the setup. Should be pretty straightforward. And then while it's daytime, we'll be getting an extra boost of power. Because as you can see down here, some of our redstone energy cells are getting pretty dim. That's because uh, we're drawing more power than we're uh, producing. It's kind of been pretty balanced at this point, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, like some days I come in here and then some of these are full and other ones are pretty close to empty. And uh, some days I come in here and some of them are completely empty and other days they're all full. I don't know. So I want to have just a little bit more power. 
Uh, now, the one downside, of course, is this age. Um, whoever wrote this age? Who wrote this age? Soren, did you write this age? Only giving it one son. Zelda. He's a noob. He only made one sun, and it's always going across the sky. I think it's even like a fast sun, so it goes across the sky pretty quick. I don't know what the deal is, but, you know, it's not that bright here all that much. So, unfortunately, our solars are just not that hot, but, eh, we'll go ahead and stick it in here, and we'll see what happens. Now, over on this side of things, how are we doing? I set up a little nifty gadget real quick, by the way, to uh, just slowly but surely pump out uh, UU matter into this chest. And then it actually gets uh, evenly distributed and keeps going. So it's a little bit slower than me moving it all manually, but it's steady. So I can just leave it running all the time. And uh, it does a pretty nice job. And we can come back here and see lots of resources being produced. We have almost 80 stacks of refined iron, which is a good indication that we have enough. Yeah, Zeldo, there he is. You did a bad job at making this void age. <laughs> yeah, we wanted a beach, that's right. So I'll be back, let me uh, get to work on some electric engines and I'm gonna show you guys a very efficient way to make your electric engines. They're gonna be, um, you know, pretty much as powerful as they can be. That's the plan. So I'm gonna need uh, quite a few pieces of tin and other stuff. All right, I'll be back, guys, in just a bit. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm heading over to my thermionic fabricator and carpenter setup. Uh, we've almost got the recipe in there that we need for a carpenter. Uh, actually, it's this one that I'm going to need, but I'm not going to make that just yet. The first thing I want to make is uh, this guy. Let's get a piece of bronze and some iron. There we go. Cool. I want to get myself a, a soldering iron. I don't think I've made one of those recently. Uh, and then meanwhile, I'm going to get some bronze set up like this and some redstone uh, set up like that. Cool. That'll get me some bronze electron tubes, which are going to boost the energy output of my, um, of my electrical engines. Now, I know it's not been too often that I've made these things, so I want to make sure to go over for you guys exactly how they work. Uh, but basically, I'm going to need some circuit boards. There's four types of circuit boards, as you probably should know by now. Uh, basic, enhanced, refined, and intricate. And each uh, tier of circuit board allows one more um, electron tube. So the basic allows one electron tube, where the enhanced allows two, refined require allows three, and intricate allows four. So we want all four circuit boards uh, uh, slots. So we're going to make intricate circuit boards and they can be placed inside our electric engines so we're going to need exactly 10 of these intricate circuit boards which is nice because six redstone and a stack of 64 will get me 10 circuit boards so i'm going to wait for those guys to cook up i'm going to need my soldering iron here and i'm going to need some bronze electron tubes now these uh electron tubes you can only put two of the same kind on a circuit board so i'm actually going to need two bronze is the best in terms of uh boosting your output and tin is the uh next one that allows you to boost your output it's just not as good as bronze so for this i'm going to need uh 20 of these now the thermionic fabricator of course doing a good job keeping the glass nice and liquid for us so we're in good shape i'm going to clear out the bronze from here and throw some tin in cool and we're going to get about 20 of these perfect and then i can start messing with my electron tubes i might even just leave some of this stuff oh look there's some iron ones in there nice iron electron tubes will uh do some other stuff i think they will increase the efficiency um it just reduces the eu input that's required but we're not worried about that honestly at this point because uh we've got plenty of eu production and uh i'd rather have uh mj output than eu reduction because you can only have uh you know four slots on there so how are we doing intricate circuit boards we've got about half done so let's open up the interface with our soldering iron and start messing around. So you can see we've got uh, different tabs here, electric engine and then your different farms for the multi-block farms. But remember the key here is you don't want to put your circuit board in the slot just yet. You want to lay out uh, the layout of your, your board. So I'm going to put some tin on there and those uh, each give electric boost one. That allows you to get seven more EU per tick drain and two more Minecraft jewels. Uh, so remember the electric engine by default all by itself uh, will produce two Minecraft jewels per tick and cost six EU. Uh, so at this point, we've just increased it by two each. So that went from two up to six. So now this uh, electric engine, if it just had these two electron boosts in there, would be producing six Minecraft jewels. But I'm going to go throw some bronze electron uh, tubes on there, and that will bump me up uh, by 
four each. So we went from six, plus four, and plus four brings me up to 14. Nice. So this is going to be a pretty nice engine. Just going to go ahead and drop a circuit board in there, and boom. Wow, look at that. So you can see here, uh, when we mouse over it, it says increase output by two and intake of EU by seven. We did that twice. And then uh, output by four and intake by 15 twice as well. Nice. So I'm going to get a bunch more of these guys. How are we doing? While I was babbling there, I think we're almost done with this. So I'll be back in just a moment once I get the last of the electron uh, electric boards here, and then we should be in pretty good shape. Now, I don't think they stack once they've been soldered, so we might need to see what's up with that. All right, guys, for some reason, these were stacking, uh, but it didn't stack with this one, so I must have done something funny there. But okay, now they are stacking with it. All right, it was being funny and not wanting to stack, but now it is weirdness okay uh what am i doing i'm doing something you you said soren ha huh. oh right you know what i probably need is some conduits let's go get that all right let's see what kind of trouble i can get into here now let's get um our electric engines going first uh this shouldn't be too hard to do just like that uh now of course we're going to want to run some conduit and we want to make sure these guys are rotated properly and then, uh, of course, we're also going to want to do the conduit connection thing, but we'll take care of that in just a minute. I actually think I'll connect it right like this. That might be a good way to do it. And then we can kind of do this and that. Cool. Sounds like a plan. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You can see I kind of planned this out a little bit. Shocking, I know. Cool. Cool. And then make them all orange, important step. And out we go. And what I'm thinking here is, hmm, I'm gonna run the line just like this. Or no, I wanna use red alloy wire, not redstone dust. And then just a lever. Now remember, this is not going to produce all that much uh, energy. Each one of these uh, guys here will go ahead and, like I said, produce about two Minecraft joules per tick because I haven't installed this uh, uh, intricate circuit board just yet. But I want to demonstrate to you guys how this works. So, I think I should have in here, where's my bag of goodies? EU reader, anybody? No, nah, maybe not. Alright, not worried about the EU. Oh yeah, there we go, I do have one. Nice. So right now, there should be pretty much no EU flowing through the line, okay? We're going to place down the lever, and the engines should be running. If we open up the interface here, you'll see that it's producing two Minecraft joules per tick each engine, okay? So total, we're producing about 20 Minecraft joules per tick, and uh, this guy over here reads a use of about 47-ish. So remember I told you it costs about, you know, six. There we go, 62. That's better. We had to rebalance, right? So 62, 64. All right, not bad. Not bad at all. 55. So once it balances out, it comes out to about 60 EU per tick. Cool. There we go. Really good and balanced at that point. But now let's turn these engines off and install the circuit boards. So just like that. And that was weird. Where'd my circuit boards go? That's funny. They actually went in there and stacked all 10 of them. Boom. <laughs> all right. I got to let uh, Sengir know about that bug, but luckily I got them back. So you can see there that they actually did stack inside the engine. Okay. So I was nervous there for a minute. I'm like, oh boy, did I just lose all 10 of those circuit boards? Am I going to have to make another set? Because that would have been expensive and painful. What is Soren doing? Also, I need to get back to work on the secret base. Soren, are we going to work on the secret base this episode after I'm done upgrading the workshop power? Soren says, I don't know, are we? All right, power on. Boom. And we should be producing 14 Minecraft jewels per tick. Nice. So all told, we've got about uh, 10 of these, producing 14 each. So 140 Minecraft jewels. And you can see here, once we recalculate the, the cost of the EU, we should be hovering right around 500 EU per tick. So there we go, 501. Nice. And you just know how EU flows, so it's a little uneven. But, you know, we're not using the full 512 that the high voltage solar array allows. Uh, but we're pretty darn close. Uh, if I threw, I could, if I really wanted to, throw another engine on here and just perfectly balance it out to 512. But it's close enough, I think. So now, 
down here, we should be producing lots and lots of Minecraft jewels. Nice. So we've got a nice set of steam here, and we've got plenty of expansion room if we need to do more of these engines along the roof. Now remember, it's only going to run during the day, but I think overall that will produce a little bit more power for us, which will be nice. So hopefully uh, we should be able to get a good amount of juice flowing through here, right? Yeah, look at that. We're already getting a surplus of redstone uh, in the redstone energy cell there. And that guy's staying pretty steady. Cool. Improvement? I think so. And I've hit all these. They're all orange. So everything's good. Awesome. We'll leave that going. We'll come back and check on it in a little bit. All right, guys. We're back, and I'm setting up some uh, MFFS stuff. Uh, just got to figure out the way I want to do it. Probably something along these lines right here. So if I set this guy up, and uh, I need to get the right module for this. I think I want the deflector. Yeah, that should do. It's just a piece of obsidian. I can manage that real quick. Surrounded by this stuff. So Pahamar, you were saying? EE3 is coming along well? It's coming. Some criticisms on the speed of which, but uh, this is just a hobby. Yeah, I know. It's cool though. Not all of us are lucky enough to be in college and have oodles of free time, Ace Horn. <laughs> so, what we're probably going to want to do with this, by the way, is if this is the blue side, then this, this, this. Oh, and I should say here, Soren. Are you mad at me that in my Let's Mod series I pronounced it XYCraft as opposed to Zycraft? I've had lots of YouTube comments over that I said it wrong. And that Soren would be mad. He would be mad. At least I didn't call it XYZCraft. <laughs> I just like that people grilled me on that and no one said anything about techna or technique. About I, I, the modeling software that two of the MCP guys have made. Oh. I'm going to need some more camouflage blocks because I want all the blocks up here. So basically, guys, what I'm making, by the way, right now is I want force field walls on all four walls, probably just three walls at least, um, of the of the tunnel there. Because I don't want people to be able to break into the walls or break through and, and manage their way. Like, they have to follow the tunnel, right? So uh, that's the plan. Now, uh, what do I need in here for camouflage? I'm going to need at least a couple. I'll get three of them. Hey, what's going on, Soren? My uh, chest is getting low on you, you matter, and it's not refilling. Is our golem stuck? User joined your channel. Hello, user. Hello, King. Hey, it's King Lemming. Hey, what's, what's up? up? How are you, buddy? I'm recording, uh, by the way. Not a whole lot. Oh, okay. Got a warning guy, man. A tag up. I don't know. What do you want from me? I don't do tags. You could start. I could. How about you just always assume I'm recording? By the way, King, uh, Soren just wanted you to know that Direwolf is recording currently. Yeah, he did. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, thank you, Soren. That's that's awesome. You're very helpful. Hey, hey, YouTube. Um, just let you know, Direwolf is recording. I'm pretty sure YouTube figured that part out by now. Well, we just need to make sure. All right. Well, thank you for clarifying. I should probably also set this thing security field so that I don't get damaged when I hit it because I don't want to take damage, but I want everyone else to. There we go. No more damage for me. But other players will. Wahaha. So how you doing, Mr. Lemming? Oh, Mr. Doing Lemming right. is his father. <laughs> it's been, been a long time since I've been work. able to use that joke. Wow, that That's was a fair. lot of extra blocks there. Trying to get refactored for 1.5. Yeah, 
Yeah, you and everybody else out here. Well, the problem is we we're sitting on a lot of stuff that was almost ready to release, but we don't want to put it out and then just have to refactor that much more before one five drops. Right. So I could trim, let's say, two more of these. So we got the entire um, charge interface, the chargeable items, and the new logistics blocks and stuff. So it'll be interesting. New logistics blocks? Yes. I have to come up with a good name, though. What are they going to do? Well, it's actually a block called logistics. It's only got one machine attached to it at the moment. Yes, Soren, logistics. Two more. But no, the first one is basically going to be a uh, filtering incinerator. Oh? You can inline it with a BC pipe. And basically, anything you tell it to destroy will not come out the other side. Oh, that's cool. So only certain things get incinerated, but not everything. Right. I like that. That's kind of nifty. I mean, it's functionally, it is a void pipe plus diamond pipe, so it's not a huge thing, but... Not it's, huge, but neat. It, there's no filtering, you know, like, there's no sorting from the diamond pipe. It's just convenient because you can inline it, and in theory, you can also hook it directly to a red power tube and then have it shoot in the relay. Nice. I like it. It's just something I thought red power probably needed. I've got something similar set up in the basement, but it's basically like a uh, lava and and a filter, like a, a block of lava. So. Yeah, that's basically what people are doing right now. I don't know if this is more CPU friendly. I think it is, but I'm not sure. It might be just because like there's no right? entity spawning or something, right? It's like with the lava, it's got to put the entity in the world and watch it burn and bounce and stuff. Probably. It might be a little more CPU friendly, yeah. And what did I have up here? I had 18 of those. All right. That should work pretty well. Cool. And if I set this up properly, it shouldn't extend much beyond here. Maybe. Is that going to be a problem? No, it should be fine. Neat. I like it. If Soren's talking a lot down there, Soren, you know I can't see what you're saying because I'm paying attention to the game, right? I just hear no, all this dinging in the me. background. He saying, listen to me. Read what Pay I'm saying. Pay attention. Why don't you love me? Because I can't hear you. That's not my problem. It kind of is your problem. Remedy it. All right, YouTube. I'll be back in a minute once I finish. Uh, I'm going to repeat basically what I did on this wall with this wall. All right, guys, we're back for one of the last setups, but you can see here we've got all the walls set up. Now, I didn't create the floor with this force field thing because I really like the way the floor is working with the whole, uh, you know, pull the floor out from under you thing, and that would have to be uh, significantly changed if I were to do uh, something a little different. So I'm thinking I don't want to do that. So I want two of you and probably two of you, and then I uh, just want to test. You know what? I should probably have another camouflage in there, but for now this is close enough. Just to demonstrate. Nice. Perfect. How you like it, Soren? I don't have a button to activate that or deactivate that force field yet, so just bear that in mind. And camouflage. I like the way the hallway is looking, though. Isn't it cool?
There we go. Up and running. Nifty. So I gotta get a few more stone bricks, and then uh, I want to set up the probably the player detector and the computer peripheral. Do we have the version of Computercraft on the server that has networked peripherals? I do not know. 1225 is the block ID. I imagine it's a block, it's his network cabling, right? So 1225, let's head over that direction and just see if we have this or not. If not, I gotta just do a little research on what's involved and how it works. If not, we're gonna have to do something a little different, but that's okay. It'll work either way. 1225, where are we at? Uh, I don't see anything along those lines. So, yeah, we'll have to come check it out later. Um, those are all the MISC peripherals things. Okay. I gotta figure out how the whole networking thing works in the new version of, um, yeah, of Computercraft. All right, I'll be back in just a minute, guys. All right, guys, so here we go. Player detector. Hopefully this will work the way I want it to. We're going to figure it out. Uh, and I just need a computer to go along with this. So any computer will do. So let's take a look at how this is going to function. So remember, this is the final level of security here, okay? Uh, we can do the following commands. So let's just write a quick demo program. And this is the most basic program I can show to demonstrate it. We use the pull event command, which remember puts our computer in just kind of a wait mode for something to happen, be it a redstone signal or whatever to happen. Uh, the adjacent block here is the player detector, okay? And what that does is when you right click on it, it fires one of those events and shows you um, the name of the player that clicked on it. So it's real easy to do. So all I'm doing is I'm printing the name of the player. I store uh, event and player. So I could even uh, do this if we want. We could do uh, event. And player. There we go. So Soren, would you be so kind as to right click on the player detector for me? Boom. Player, Soren. Now if I run the demo program, we can see here it says player direwolf. Cool. So that's how we're going to use uh, like our layer two of security. We want to make sure that only the certain players who are added to the list of uh, you know allowed players uh, are going to be allowed to enter the, the base. So it's going to be real easy. Uh, we're just going to set the computer in a in a sleep mode, and we're going to say, hey, when you get a player coming by and he right clicks on the block, check out who he is. So here we go, player detector, right? That's going to go right here. Uh, but we're going to have to shut down this force field temporarily just to get the player detector set up. Um, so maybe I didn't want to break that block. It doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, it'll be right there. It'll be the center of these two force fields, right? Um, and so we turn this guy off for a minute, and we can get this all to do. So there, and the player detector, and then behind the player detector, we're going to have the computer, okay? So it should be real easy to set up. And then we can have the computer set up to run on startup so that when a player comes in here and they want to get into the base, so you're ready for this one? Player is entering the base, simply right click on the little face guy. And when they right click on him, it's going to turn off this force field. So, like the force field will be on. When they right click, if they're allowed in, force field off. If they're not allowed in, well, this sign here tells you what's going to happen. Ha ha ha. I like how Soren's head just tilted down at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> I hope I'm on the guest list. So we'll always let people out. If they decide, you know what, I'm not going to try and hack into Direwolf and Soren's base, that's okay. But, you know, if they too try to hack in, well, they might meet their end in lava. And with that, guys, I think we're pretty much uh, hitting up the wrapping up point of the episode. Uh, we made some good progress today. I wanted to come back and check on our power supply. How are we doing? Redstone Energy Cell. This one's still pretty low, but this one's starting to fill up. So I think as this one fills up some more, this one will start filling up as well. And then we'll be really in pretty good shape. Of course, these things aren't running full time. You can see they're off right now. It probably just got dark out. And then over here, I want to see how my... Uh, 
Oh yeah, we've got lots of this stuff. Look at this, we've already got enough for another HP solar. Nice. So uh, all the uh, solar work that we're doing is coming along well. So obviously the HP solar here isn't as good as the steam engine because these things aren't running full time. Uh, however, you know, it's a nice supplement to the power. It, it just gives us a little extra boost that was uh, easy and a little different to set up because, you know, I think I've got enough uh, high pressure boilers in there. I didn't want to have another B going on. Uh, but speaking of bees, I actually did put one more bee in the apiary and uh, set it up. So I want to see how this thing is doing. All right, we're doing pretty good on oily propolis. I'm going to keep an eye on this, and hopefully later I'll see more oily propolis in the squeezer than already exists. And if that's the case, it means adding that bee down in the bee room worked out, and it's enough. And if not, I might need another one. We'll see. Definitely another bee in an uh, alviary would work. Well, like I said, gotta wrap up the episode, so uh, hope you guys enjoyed checking out episode number 35. I had a good time here, and uh, we'll be back next episode. I'll probably work a little bit on the secret uh, passageway leading to our base between this episode and next, and then when I come back, I should have a pretty cool little build to show you guys on how people can get in and out of our secret base. Alright guys, Direwolf20 signing off, thanks for watching, and take it easy!